Now we're going to apply some of that CSS animation knowledge to something simple on a page. If you go into the CSS3 anim, you'll see a final folder, and you can see this HTML file. Open that up in your browser if you want to, and I've got it open already. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh. So if you watch, what we're going to do is we're going to animate a header on a page to come just sliding in. Now you can use what we're about to learn and apply it to just about anything. I mean, there's tons of things we can do. All right, let me close that up. What I want you to do is I want you to open up Index Start. Double click to open that. And you should see that what I've got in here is I've got a header. You see down here at header HTML that just has a bunch of stuff in it. Okay. Right up here, I also have a header style. And the header style's just started. Now, what I'm going to do is go open this in the browser. So I'll just go do that real quick. Open it up. There you go. You can see it's already showing up. There's no animation, nothing happening yet. Now, if we go back to the HTML, what we're going to do is we're going to add the animation to the header here, the header style, and then we're going to put our keyframes below it. So come into header here. Now, we're going to see something kind of interesting happen. We'll get around it. But what I want you to do is if you have certain browsers, if you're using Chrome, it's a WebKit browser. If you're using let's a Chrome or Safari, rather, it's a WebKit-based browser. If you're using Firefox, it's a Mozilla browser. If you're using Opera, it's O, uh, or Opera browser, and other browsers will work. The reason why I'm saying this is because when we go to write this in, remember, we've got to put in all the vendor prefixes, which really sucks. But if you're just starting out, if you know the browser you're looking at, like Chrome or Safari, you know you can use the WebKit vendor prefix and get it to show. So that's what I'm going to do. If, if you don't know, you can try. So... I'm going to type in hyphen webkit hyphen animation colon colon really. Now we can put in what we want. And don't forget we're going to be using shorthand to do this. So the first thing we need to do is name the animation. And I'll just call it like header slide or something like that. And I can't even spell wow. Header slide. Sully, what is that? Header slide, great. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in something like the duration and then a delay and then how many times it happens. In the previous video, I don't know if I mentioned this, but when you do animation like this as a property and you put in all these values, the ordering total it really doesn't matter except you need to, if you're going to use something like uh, duration and delay, it needs to be in that order. The duration, like how long it's going to be, and then the, the delay. So let's put the duration as, let's say, like one second. And we're going to delay it one second. And we're going to have it happen one time. So number one, you can do it. And it, you know what? I mean, that should pretty much do it for us. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in the keyframes. So we're going to put in the at symbol, hyphen, webkit, hyphen, keyframes, space, the name of the animation, header, slide, our braces, our brackets, and then this is where we could get tricky. We could say from and to, or we can do the percentage. There's a, a couple different ways we can do this. I just want to do this. We're just going to go pretty easy. We're going to say from. And then in there, what we're going to do is this. Right now, the header is just sitting there. We're going to make it so that it's positioned above the browser, so it's outside of the viewport. Then we're going to slide it in using a positioning. We're going to keep it simple. We could go in and use absolute positioning and different things like that. But for this example, we're going to use relative. So if you come right up here to header, first of all, what we need to do is we need to set a positioning on this a relative. So put your cursor at the semicolon and just put in position and put in relative. Now it just says we can actually move it from where it's located. Now that means there's going to be a big hole there, which there's a couple ways we can handle this. But Come to from, and we're going to say top. We're going to put it at minus 100 picks. Now, this is a value that you have to figure out based on the height and the padding and all that stuff. Our height and the padding together equals 100. After the brace, hit a return, and then say two braces. Whoops. And you can also stagger these braces like this if you want to. We'll say top zero. So you could, this, this sometimes can make it a little bit easier to read if you do something like this. And this is the way you'll see sometimes people will write it. Okay. Now, we've got it out there. We've got the actual animation. We've got the position and everything out there. We're going to make sure that this works. So I'm going to go out to my browser, and I'm going to refresh. And there we go. Nice.
Now, if it didn't work for you, what you want to do is you want to check the syntax. You can pause the video and look at the syntax, make sure it's working. The other thing that might be happening, like I already mentioned, is you might be in a different browser. If you're in Chrome and Safari, this will work, WebKit. If you're in Firefox, you need MOZ, Mozilla, for the, uh, the front. And if it doesn't work at all, you could just try the word animation and then just the word keyframes. All right, now a couple other little things here that we're going to do. What I want to do is we're going to say it's going to go from off the page to this. Now, unfortunately, what's going to happen is when I did it, if you watch, it starts here. And after a second, it goes up there and then it comes back down, okay, which kind of stinks, okay? So what I want to do is this. So there's a couple ways we can handle this. We could actually do this. You can come into the header, the tag itself, or the uh, style itself, and we could start it off the page. So we could do something like this. That way, if a browser doesn't understand the animation stuff, it'll at least look the way it should to begin with. So I'll save this. Now watch what happens when I refresh. It's going to automatically start off the page, then the animation begins, and it goes and runs. The problem is, it's going to run once, but it goes back to the beginning. It basically defaults to our original formatting, which is off the page, which stinks. So what we can do is, if we want to end it, on the two, we want it to stay here when the animation is finished. In our animation property here, what we can do is we can add something like this. We can add the word forwards. It's essentially saying stop at the end and stay there. Now I can go in and refresh. It's still going to start up here and then slide down and stop because it stopped the last keyframe. There we go. Nice. And we can also do an easing if we want to. We can do like a, an ease, uh, ease out if we want to as it comes out. Ease in means it starts slower. Ease out means it ends slower. You can try that if you want to. And yeah, it doesn't make a big difference, but there we go. A little bit slower. So there's a lot of things we can do here. Now, unfortunately, what's going to happen is with a browser, let's say like older Internet Explorer or something like that, you're not going to see the header because we're going to position it off the page to start with. It's going to be outside the viewport which kind of sucks. So is it, we could go in and create a, an IE only style sheet that says top zero, something like that. There's a bunch of ways you could try and handle this. But unfortunately, animations don't work in every browser, every mobile browser, things like that. But they do work in a lot of them, and people use them all the time. If you want to get an animation to work in Internet Explorer, what I would suggest is going to a browser and typing in like um, IE support. So you can see I've done it too, animation something like that. And you can go to a website and you can see, can I use animation? Does it support it, etc. And you know, there's tons of, of things you can look at here. Um, cross browser animation, adding personality, CSS support in, in Internet Explorer 9. Um, let's do that. CSS animation, IE, fallback, or something like that. And then you can see that there's tons of things. CSS3, animation, IE, fallback. There's tons of stuff. There's a jQuery fallback you can use. There's graceful degre uh, degradation if you can use it. Basically having a CSS uh, style just for IE. There's lots of ways you can get that to work. Okay. So the idea here is that we get it to work in all the browsers and everybody's happy or at least without the animation happening, at least it shows up. Don't forget that you need to go back to your code and you need to put all the vendor prefixes. So for instance, for WebKit here, I'm going to copy, whoops, I'm going to copy and then paste, 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 there we go, and put Mo's O and just animation, and that's not an O, that's a zero, oh well, and then just animation, same thing with the keyframes, got to support all the browsers that, that do support it, so paste, 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 there we go, WebKit, Mo's, Opera, and just keyframes. There it is. All right. That's working with a little bit of animation. Lots of great things you can do with it. Try and explore some.